Lifespan. Why we age and why we don't have to. I'm so happy there are people like you out there because I don't want to age. I'm aging, clearly, but uh, I'm not interested in it. I don't like it. Yeah, well, I don't know anybody who does. Anyway, the guy there, uh, Steve Horvath is his name. Uh, he and I and a couple of other guys are trying to figure out uh, not just why we age, why we don't have to, but is aging uh, truly reversible? And that's what this study suggests, is that it's not just about slowing down aging, but one day we could be 80, but biologically 30. Uh, we, we believe we understand how to slow aging. Uh, there are genes that predispose you to, to long life. And so we now know that there's a set of genes called reprogramming factors, also known as Yamanaka factors, that are from named after this Japanese fellow who won the Nobel Prize in 2012. These factors are used to reprogram skin cells, other cells to be what we call pluripotent stem cells. These are cells that can be used to make new organs or new blood cells. Mm. But what people hadn't tried until recently was, can you do this in a living animal? Or are you just gonna mess it up? Uh, and what we found out is that uh, if you do it the wrong way, you mess up the animal and it'll die. But what we've shown for the first time in this paper is you can do it in a safe way. And not only that, reverse the clock make the cells young and restore how they work. So you might have a whole full cycle from like uh, 20 or 10 to 40 years old again. That's the future, that you'll get a delivery of this virus, you'll take the antibiotic for a few weeks, be fully rejuvenated, and the doctor says come back in a couple of decades. Well, we're literally reversing uh, not just the effects of aging, but aging itself. My guest is Dr. David Sinclair a professor in the Department of Genetics at Harvard Medical School, where he researches and tries to understand the biological mechanisms that regulate the aging process and how to slow them. I can't think of a more interesting question than understanding the biological mechanisms that regulate aging and how to slow it. I'm very interested in, in it myself, for sure. Uh, well, I've been studying this, uh, as you know, for over 30 years now. And when we first started out, we knew nothing. And then we went to little yeast cells, and then we worked our way up to worms and mice. And now myself and uh, probably a couple of dozen other researchers around the world have broken through a barrier of understanding about why we age and how we can actually reverse it. Why do we age? How do we age? What I'm proposing is that there are lots of different causes of aging. Telomere loss is another, is, is a main one. There's stem cell loss, senescent cells, so zombie cells that accumulate, all these things. We, we actually as a field, I'm a scientist, uh, first and foremost, we declared victory over aging about 10 years ago. We said, there are eight causes of aging. Mm. Let's put them in a pie chart. We're done. We know what causes aging. Mm. And I'm there thinking, that's great, but what causes those things? Right. And wake the world up. Why aren't we worried about this? This is not yeah. good. We treat cancer. We treat heart disease. We treat frailty. We treat Alzheimer's. Mm. But you know what causes all of those things? Aging, why don't aging. we care? Mm. The field is exploding. Yes. So I agree with you that longevity research is gonna make the iPhone look like old news. I do too. So my goal is really to, first of all, understand why do we age? Uh, how do we slow it down? Is it reversible? And can we keep the whole body younger? And I believe we can. And that's what I'm gonna tell you about tonight. Aging is just as natural as cancer and heart disease and Alzheimer's. Why are you focusing on all those things that kill you while ignoring all the things that cause those things in the first place? So my argument is, why are we focusing on what causes us to fall off the cliff without even talking about, let alone working on in a big way, what drives us, us to that edge of the cliff in the first place? And cancer in general is a great pursuit to, to solve cancer. Um, but we spend, I think it's about $5 billion a year just on research alone on cancer. But cancer is only part of the story. If you smoke like my mother did, your chance of getting cancer, lung cancer, goes up by about five-fold, which is really bad, right? So we try not to smoke. And there's big government campaigns to try and prevent it. But if you go from 20 to 70, your chances of getting lung cancer go up by 500 fold and nobody's even talking about it. So what's the major killer? It's aging. So my goal with my research at Harvard Medical School, which I've been doing at Harvard for 20 years and five years over the road at MIT, um, is to figure out why do we age? 
Does anyone, anyone have a clue why we age? Does anyone really, and do any of you think about it? Probably not, right? Because even doctors who treat aging, the gerontologists, they don't think about it either. It's as though we're, we're, we've evolved to not even think about it. Like, what do you think are the most important things that people should be doing or looking after on a daily basis to kind of, you know, take out an insurance policy against aging, given the current state of knowledge and understanding? I think the most important thing for anybody to live healthier for longer, if there was just one thing I could say, it would be eat less often. Don't eat three meals a day. I mean, you don't want malnutrition or starvation, of course, but putting the body in a state of want every day um, for as long as you can do it. I do it, you know, like I said, hopefully till late afternoon dinner. That's the easiest and best thing you can do. Mm -hmm. Other things are the high intensity interval training or jumping up and down with weights in a swimming pool. But but honestly, we now know we all have the, the power with the scientific basis to actually live a, at least 15 years longer. That there are, there are five things that are pretty obvious and easy to do uh, that'll give you 15 years. Things like, you know, exercise, the fasting, don't eat too much, eat the right foods, try to be uh, plant-based, uh, get sleep, have social network. That gives you 15 years. That's amazing. Right. Um, all right, so fasting, trying to uh, create some hormesis in your life, uh, basically living a Blue Zones lifestyle. Um, in terms of supplementation, you're, I know you're not going to give like, you know, specific recommendations, but basically walking through what you do, you take a daily resveratrol, you take an NMN supplement, which is basically a supplement oriented around promoting NAD, correct? Correct. Uh, I, I take NMN because A, I have a ready supply because we're doing clinical trials, but also uh, because I've studied it the most. Mm -hmm. And that's it, right? There's no other, Are you? is there anything else that you're taking? Yeah, yeah, there's a, there's a, a bit of a list. Uh, I'm also taking a drug. Ooh, a drug, uh, right? Uh, uh, a drug called metformin, which is the oh, diabetes right. drug. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, so metformin has been around since the 1970s and been in tens of millions of people. It's relatively safe. It's not perfect. It's not totally risk-free. Mm -hmm. But what I would recommend to do is to think, uh, what risk am I willing to take? Uh, what are the potential downsides? And with a drug that's been in millions of people, there's a risk, but it, the risk is pretty low. Um, and then uh, you know, how expensive is it? Right? Some, some of these things are still just very new to the market. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that we all know what's going to happen in the end if we don't do anything. If we just sit right. around and do what you know we think feels comfortable, the end is not pretty.